brothers and sisters, look. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may take something away from you sometimes. He may give you a loss. Sometimes you may think that He is punishing you. Don't think like that. Sometimes you may think God is not there for you. Don't ever think like that. I want you always to remember this one. And this particular incident helped me, brothers and sisters. You all know, alhamdulillah, what happened in my tragedy. I lost my son and my brother. Rahmatullahi alayhima. And a lot of you have lost your family members too. I know that. Some of you. And it's not easy. All our brothers and sisters around the world. I want you to remember this particular incident always in Surah Al-Kahf. You know the story of Musa and Al-Khadr. And you all know quickly the story. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Moses, Musa alayhi salam, There is a man whom we have given more wisdom and knowledge than you, which you do not know, of the unseen. Musa alayhi salam was known for his toughness. And at the same time, he became impatient with anything that was displeasing to Allah. He wouldn't hold very quickly. He, even so that the Prophet ﷺ used to say Musa السلام, was a man of toughness. And that's what his people needed. But only for the sake of Allah. So Musa السلام, he was also humble and he said, Oh my Lord, show me where he is so I may go and learn from him from what you have taught him. Nobody is ever too big for knowledge, brothers and sisters. And who is this man? Nobody knows who he is. And he is the messenger of Allah from Ulil Azm, Musa alayhi salam. So he went to him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him in the Quran, the story is long, you will find him at this particular place and so on. Anyway, in the end he meets him and Musa alayhi salam says to him, Hal ala an mimma ullimta rushda? Will you allow me to follow you as my mentor? To teach me from what your Lord has taught you? from what Allah has taught you of goodness and guidance, immediately the man says to him, <laughs> he didn't even ask who he is, he just listened to him, can I follow you to teach me from what Allah taught you? Immediately he says, Lan ya sabra. you're not going to be able to be patient with me. Bang, just like that. No ands, ifs or buts, no introduction, no politeness. You won't be able to handle it. Musa salam got a little bit offended here it seems. From the context of the verse, it says, sabira. You will see me, Allah willing, among the patient ones. Amra. I won't disobey anything you tell me. Like he's pleading to him. Immediately he says to him, Okay, if you follow me, don't you dare ask me a single question. Until I decide the right time when I will tell you. He said, you have my word. And so he went with him. The story goes on. There were some poor people who worked on the sea with a, with a boat. And their boat was a little bit, how are you going? They went on to it. They looked after them. They fed them. They gave them a room at the bottom of the deck. They were very generous to them. Al-Khadr goes down with Moses to the bottom of the deck. And what does he do? He takes out an axe or whatever. And he begins to break and destroy and ruin their boat. Musa السلام, knowing that he is a prophet of Allah and the one who cannot handle displeasing Allah, he says, what have you done? Imra. You've done something terribly outrageous. These people were, correct, were, were generous to us and you come and destroy their boat? What is this? <laughs> he immediately says to him, Qala, alam akul inna ma sabra. Didn't I say you will not be able to handle and be patient with me? Musa Sam then remembered immediately, he says, قَالَ لَا تُؤَخِذْنِي بِمَا نَسِيتِ Please don't hold me accountable for what I forgot. وَلَا تُرْهِقْنِي مِنْ أَمْرِ عُسْرَ And please don't do my head in. Don't keep talking to me and give me a lecture about it. I, I, I learnt my lesson. The man stayed quiet. They went. Afterwards they travel. And then they reached uh, a young boy, probably nine or ten years old. A young boy walking across. The man goes up to the young boy, hello, how are you? And then he kills him. Immediately kills him. Musa السلام, couldn't hold himself. This is even worse than the boat issue. You've just killed an innocent soul. 
When he hasn't killed and he hasn't done anything. You have done something that is totally unacceptable, outrageous, immoral. Then he says, Alam aqul laka innaka lan ma'ya sabra. The man adds one more word, but it's harsh and very short. He said to him, Did I not tell you before to you? So it's getting a bit harsh, like laka to you that you will not be able to be patient. Musa Asalam then remembers, he says, قَالَ إِنْ سَأَلْتُكَ عَنْ شَيْءٍ بَعْدَهَا فَلَا تُصَاحِبْنِي He says, listen, if I ask you one more question, you have a right to kick me out. He knew what he had done. قَدْ بَلَغْتَ مِنْ لَدُنِّي عُذْرًا I don't have any more excuses, you're right. So then they entered a land, a town, that town, they were very harsh to them. They didn't give them any food. They didn't give them any shelter. And we know the wayfarers, you're supposed to look after them. And these people were extremely rude, obnoxious to them. And they insulted them, kicked them out. As they were walking out and getting kicked out of the town, the man, Al-Khadr, saw a wall from a building that the people were trying to rebuild. But they were struggling with it. It was about to fall. So he goes and starts helping them. Now Musa looks at it, alayhi salam, and he says, so he helps him, and after they finished, he says to him very quietly, قَالَ لَوْ شِئْتَ لَتَّخَذْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا so if, if you wanted to, at least you could have taken some money for what he helped them with. <laughs> I mean, they were harsh to us, just take, nothing wrong with taking some money and help us. He goes, قَالَ هَذَا فِرَاقُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنِكِ He says, that's it, no more companionship between us, that's it, you've got no more excuses, you couldn't be patient, off you go. No, you're not able to handle stuff like this, Moses. Musa He says, but look, before you go, I will tell you the meanings of all these three so that you will learn. La ilaha illallah. As Allah says, Every person is knowledgeable, there's someone even more knowledgeable. And Allah is the most knowledgeable. He says to him, as for the boat or the ship that we embarked, as you can see, they were poor people, they were good people. And their route, the route that they go on, they have to go past a particular town. They've got no other choice. And on, in that town, there currently has now become a king. There is a king on that route who is oppressive. He is taking every good-looking ship and good-looking boat. He takes it off its owners and doesn't pay them anything. And as you can see, they were already doing it hard. Had he taken their boat, they would have been homeless on the street and died of hunger or something like that. So I wanted to make their boat look like it's ruined. Just something light, so that the king leaves their boat alone when he sees it, and they continue to go on their route, and they don't have to, you know, uh, stop getting their provision. He said, as for the second issue with the boy, he said, their parents, his parents were righteous mothers, and it was a, he had a righteous mother and father. And yes, that boy didn't do anything. However, he was going to grow up to become a tyrant of disbelief over his parents and he was going to cause them oppression and a heartache and badness and evil. Allah wanted to take this boy now at a young age and replace him with a better child for them. In other words, the child who died, Allah will to forgive him. He knows. And the child that is going to give them is going to be righteous. And the parents will live a good life. All of them in the end will enter paradise. That's why. And as for the wall and the building and those people who treated us harshly, he said to him, that wall belonged to two orphans. And they had nobody to protect them and defend them. And underneath that wall, underneath... There was a treasure left behind for them. They will inherit it. And they had a great, 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 great grandfather. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا I'm just talking the tafsir. Their great, 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 great grandfather was a righteous man. Because of him, Allah wanted to look after this seventh generation. Which shows that if you're righteous, brothers and sisters, Allah looks after your generations, even seven down, down the road. And you could see how the people were harsh. Had they seen the treasure, they would have taken the treasure from these orphans and nobody would defend them and they'll be out homeless on the street. 
So I wanted to build it and keep it a secret so that the boys can grow up and when they grow strong enough to claim their treasure, nobody will be in their way. And then he added one more thing. One of these three that you saw me doing, I did not do them out of my own judgment. I did them out of Allah's order. So you don't go off, brothers and sisters, and doing things like that. But Allah wanted to teach us a lesson. What is that lesson? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't give you what you want exactly, when something happens out of your expectation, when things don't go exactly as you had asked or as you had expected, brothers and sisters, whether you made istikhara, for example, and then you thought that things didn't go your way, or even if they went your way, it's not necessarily good or bad for you. Allah only knows. You have to continue to trust in Allah and rely on Him. Whether good or bad is the outcome. Because in our eyes, we may see something bad as a ba an outcome as bad when Allah knows it's good for you, just be patient. And sometimes we may see something as good for us when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that it may not be the best for you. So sometimes you may lose in order to gain. Sometimes you may get sick to get healthier. Sometimes you may lose to get rewarded. Sometimes you go through strife in order for some other plan to come out. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Allah knows and you do not know.